Here's this week's question. Dear Dave and T.A., if Calvinism is true biblically, then how does it reconcile its belief that God predestined some to hell before they were born with Romans 5.12 and 5.18? Romans 5.12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And 5.18 Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. David's the all in here that... Uh, all men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all men. That right. would make those verses, I would think, problematic for Calvinists. But how, how do they respond, as, as, as you know? Well, Tom, first of all, um, whoever wrote, wrote this in uh, said that how do they reconcile that God predestined some to hell before they were even born? Now, the Calvinists, some would accept that, but many Calvinists would deny that. Uh, they, in fact, some Calvinists would say God didn't predestine anybody to hell. He just let them go. <laughs> Um, well, Christ didn't die for them, so they couldn't possibly escape hell, could they? You couldn't. You don't even have a gospel for them to believe. Well, yeah, but God didn't predestine them there. He just let them go. This verse says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, mm -hmm that all have sinned. In other in, words, there's in, a condition in, in that, here. In that all Isn't this a sin. condition necessary to, uh, to be predestined to hell? Or let's say even if they don't, isn't that a condition uh, that needed to take place? In other words, this wasn't something that God did before the beginning of time, which a Calvinist would tell you that's the way it works. Yeah, but all have sinned. So all by, by nature are sinners and... Because of that, all are headed for, for hell. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me find this verse that we're looking at. Chap verse 18 is the particular one. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Well, how does the Calvinist get around that? Same way yeah. they get around John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him. Well, yeah, but you understand, that means the world of the elect. So when it says, uh, the free gift came upon all men unto justification, well, no, wait a minute, that doesn't mean all men, actually. It means all of the elect, you see. But... The, whoever wrote this question. Yeah, but Dave, what about the just before that? Well, As by the offense of one judgment came upon all men. Did right. it only come upon the elect? Right. No. See, you've got a parallelism here. You've got a, a tit for tat or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's the same as you have in Isaiah 53. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, who went astray? All mankind, all have sinned. Well, then, all the ones who sinned, their iniquity was laid upon Christ. And it, it does say, John the Baptist does say, Behold the Lamb of God, who beareth away the sins of the world. Uh, so, uh, but the Calvinist gets around it by saying, what? what, what and when it says, when it's talking about those who have sinned, that's everybody. But when it's talking about those for whom Christ died, uh, no, no, that's only the elect. That could only be the elect, and then they can argue. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. Then that would mean that some of Christ's blood was shed, for it was shed in vain. If not everybody gets saved, but he dies for everybody. But it says he came to save sinners. Well, but if he doesn't save some of the sinners that he came to save, 
then the Bible isn't true. So they have all kinds of arguments, Tom. But what do we come down to? Look, there are some tough verses. Uh, there are so many verses that are very clear. This is one of them. All men unto condemnation, all men unto life. It's very clear. Or if we went to uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 4, he would have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, well, how do they get around that? Well, oh, that means all of the elect, some Calvinists would say. Others, like John MacArthur, if you look in his um, MacArthur Study Bible, he says, no, God has two wills, a will of desire and a will of decree. Uh, he really desires all to be saved, but he doesn't decree for all to be saved. So now we have a God who, what? I thought he could do anything he wanted to do, and he really desires for all to be saved, but he, then he stops short of bringing them to salvation. Uh, Tom, uh, Calvinism is, um, uh, do I dare to say, I think, it's, um, it maligns God. The Bible says God is love. And we, we title the book, What Love Is This? You say God loves everybody, but he doesn't want everybody to be saved, or he wants them to be saved, but he doesn't save them. What kind of love is that? For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 